Good afternoon, morning, or evening, everybody. My name is Junior, also known as Demo Impact on uh, on WoW's Legends. And over the uh, past few months, I've been playing the mess out of carriers and steeds. We're starting to get boring and stale. And I actually found myself, uh, found having myself a, a great time. Uh, during that time, I've set a couple records uh, with the carriers. I've held the XP and damage record for Saipan until it got overtaken a while back. And as of August 24th, 2022, I hold both the Pobeda XP and damage records, and I'm not gonna lie, this is kind of fun. So in these couple strings of videos I plan to develop over the course of uh, maybe a month, um, I'm gonna de uh, be developing a how-to guide for the most uh, misplayed and most often overlooked carriers in the game. Uh, a few examples being uh, the Pobeda as you see here, Independence, Ranger, maybe even Zuiho if we get to that point. And, but today we're gonna be st uh, starting with the uh, a tier 7, uh, a classic, well not really classic because this thing wasn't really made, IRL. Uh, don't tell the Kremlins I said that because you're going to kidnap me. But uh, honestly, in my opinion, this is arguably the strongest carry at tier 7 uh, for skill floor um, and skill ceiling. If you get really good with the skill ceiling on this thing, this thing is going to be a monster. It uh, has incredible utility and it's a destroying smashing monster. Pobeda, the tier 7, very real Soviet carrier. Assuming peeps that are watching this uh, know how to fly planes and have played Serov enough to get the Pobeda, this video is for you. I also have a advanced guide coming next week, so if you feel like you have a good enough grip on this Russian behemoth, this advice might be all too familiar for you. But enough chat, let's talk Pobeda. The current king of the Russian CV line, Pobeda, until Nakamov, dro uh, Nakamov drops, brings over Serov skips and torpedo bombs with a little twist. Instead of having a amazing, great cruising speed, Pobeda opts to have a Jado charge on all airborne attacking aircraft. So skip bombers and torpedo bombs that come off of this thing automatically have the Jado um, Jado effect active. This will cover uh, an area of roughly 6 kilometers if you're using engine boost. Uh, but if you're just holding onto, the, onto left or right, just changing direction and not increasing the speed at all, Jado will only bring you around 4.5 kilometers off the carrier on itself. <laughs> but... Along with this uh, very, very age-appropriate technology, she uh, she also brings the second armored deck to tier seven. Um, tier seven carries following the implacable. So I'm going to show you if these changes actually work for or against the Poveda. So let's find out. First off, Yevgeny. He's going to be the main commander pick. The free commander also works. Not bad. But you do miss out on a couple things. Firstly, you miss out on extra torpedo damage, and you miss out on the second bomb, bomb HP and bomb detect, which my build, which is going to be very aggressive, uh, builds four. But an aggressive, uh, aggressive playstyle requires some mods, so let's go to that. So carriers don't get much variety with the upgrades, uh, or the mods, if you can. So starting off. Uh, very simple flight control mod 1. You don't really want to take secondary battery because the secondaries are pretty much useless on the Pobeda. Uh, second slot goes easily to air groups mod 2. A guns mod 2 will, um, will be very useless because the cap fighters on most carriers will, uh, kill the attacking squad that's attacking your carrier. And honestly, if a carrier attacks you, uh, either you're misplaying or he's misplaying hard. So, increasing the bomb and torpedo HP on this thing of all things is uh much appreciated uh slot three no brainer concealment systems you don't want to be tar uh, taking target acquisition because there's no use for it since you can uh you can see everything with the planes and the spotting range increase will not help at all torpedo <laughs> not at all and rga if, if a ship's within uh three kilometers of a poveda i think i think uh the poveda is gonna die concealment systems help us helps out a lot because the poveda is a lighthouse carrier and for the last one you are going to want to take air groups mod 3. I have several reasonings for this. First off, uh, bomber HP and torpedo bomber HP. Uh, the lowest at the tier and you want to get that uh, HP as much as possible since we don't have a survivability expert like PC does for the for the planes. And the return speed is also quite nice. With the way I'm going to be playing the Poveda, you don't really want to be taking uh, flight control mod. It's more so working against you now because you're losing on HP. And with the Jado, it's it's almost useless. 
Now, on to the build. Yevgeny, starting off, we have contact as imminent. Yeah, this this helps with the Pobeda torpedo army distance, since the, uh, the army distance on the Pobeda is incredibly long. Um, it's roughly 2.25 kilometers uh, long, so killing killing some of the time that the torpedoes need to take in order to hit a target is very much so appreciated. Slot 2 goes to a one-way ticket easily, since if you're taking damage in the carrier, you're more likely going to die, or you're going to... You're risking your team's advantage in an early part of the match if you're playing way too aggressively. Uh, well, once again, one-way ticket easily takes this because you're getting around with it max five times six. You get 30% more damage um, for the overall strike. So let's say you land six. If you land all six, you get 30% uh, of another torpedo in there. So that's that's greatly appreciated. Slot three out of sight. Now I go for out of out of uh, out of sight because uh, the skip bombers are more so the best planes in the game at the moment. They are universal. They hit uh, like a truck. They have a lot of pen. Recently, I've asked in the World of Warships Legends official Discord. Um, I asked for Pobeda HE um, skip bomb pen, and it was 54 millimeters, and that's quite a lot. So building for this, and instead of a, a more niche torpedo torpedo run since torpedoes are more so used to attacking uh bbs uh cruisers large if you have the chance maybe attacking an azuma maybe even then they have a quite a long time for a cruiser to impact so the torpedoes more so niche for battleships and um and the carriers so getting a universal that can attack uh destroyers cruisers uh, battleships and carriers that's that's significantly better and uh, impervious almost useless because of the 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 minute long damage con that uh, all carriers get slot four burn baby burn reasoning here um skip bombs as you may know as you may have seen uh incredible anti-dd utility probably the best anti-dd utility that uh, carriers have at the moment um any chance you get to do more damage uh to a destroyer um if you get more chance, more damage on destroyer, and let's say the strike doesn't kill him, let's say you don't one tap him, which most of the times you're not, um, that destroyer is going to get away with uh, very few HP. Uh, compared to dark silhouette, you already have a, a lighthouse. You already have a lighthouse, and you have quite a couple things helping you out to counter that lighthouse. First off, with my build, you have a 35 knot rotate and the 30 millimeter deck that everyone gets, so that's almost negating dark silhouette there. And Dennis Boyd actually. For inspirations, more likely than not, you're going to be spotted by planes and not the surface ships. So Dennis Boyd, uh, helping kill a little bit of the detectability. And um, if you don't have Azure Lane Shokaku, um, right? So Tanaka, uh, Makarov to increase your Damicon, or or Swirsky to increase detect overall detect. Um, very good picks. Um, very good alternatives to Shokaku. But personally, Shokaku is uh, my number one pick for the second slot after Dennis Boyd because of the carrier rotate. A lot of people underestimate uh, carrier rotates, and most carriers at tier 7, with the exception of maybe Kaga, uh, rotate over 30 knots, and that's very good. Um, finally, the legendary slot easily goes to fully packed, without a doubt, on Pobeda. It's incredibly useful. First off, uh, you get another EGC charge, uh, engine cooling. Um, since these planes are incredibly slow um, at the tier, they're, they're the slowest planes at the tier. Having another... Having another cooldown on that engine timer is incredibly useful for rotating your planes. Getting uh, dots to stack perfectly so you get maximum dot damage on any ship. M uh, most of the times it's actually going to be carriers. Um, having an EM charge, incredibly useful because these planes are very low. And another fighter pod. And the fighters on Pobeda are the deadliest at tier 7. Uh, they're a 7 man fighter pod. They can one shot a Saipan, a Saipan squadron, a torpedo or dive bomb. If you give it the chance, it will one-tap it. The entire squadron will be gone. So that's the build. So let's talk basic combat. And we're going to go into some gameplay here to show you that. So um, when you first play Pobeda, as soon as you start up, you're going to... You're going to check the, the scoreboard. If you see DDs, at least two, or maybe even one, you swing out with skip bombs 90% uh, of the time. Two DDs, a DD, 
even some cruisers uh, suffer to the skip bombs. So popping skip bombers uh, before the, the torpedo bombers helps out a ton. Again, because they're a universal uh, bomb type. Also, with your 30mm deck, you can actually push up a little more aggressively. Since you can uh, you can bounce most shells. Here comes uh, the 7-man seven, seven fighter pod, the strongest at tier 7. The next strongest is at legendary tier. And because of this, this might actually be an enemy pod. Yep, there we go. And I don't, I don't want to enter that, even though this is an AI game. So those fighters are going to latch. There they go. Yep. Squadron's ripped because uh, it's the strongest fighter pod in the game. And now, here's the the more important thing I wanted to show you guys in, in this uh, in this episode. The Poveda Skip Bombers are momentum-based. Their their attack pattern is momentum-based. So the faster your planes are going, the the more the more likely your your uh, your bombs are going to hit the target if they're going if they're going um Oh, what's the word? I don't even know what the word is, sorry. Um, first time recording a video, like, actually. But here, I'll, I'll show you guys over here. So when I say momentum-based... Again, you already heard me say it, but I'm gonna say it again. The faster your planes are going, the more uh, closer to the water the bombs are gonna be. So let's say I were to strike, like, here, and if I were going max speed, on the lowest altitude possible, these bombs, they're gonna come in at a, not not as much of a steep angle, but I can I can show it here with one bomb. Pro tip, by the way, if you want to kill the Jado and you're too close to enemies, just pull back on the stick and your Jado will come off. Let's say I was going incredibly slow. Let's say I was going incredibly slow. I start the drop and watch my bomb. It's going to jump up like crazy. There we go. And then it's going to skip. Unlike, let's say I, I were to skip skip at max speed. It would uh, not only get to the next line faster, but it would come in at a, at a lower angle. Thus, we would be able to get uh, better hits. So let's say I were to attack this Mogami. If I'm coming in fast, 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 I'm more likely to hit the side and uh, get there in time. Like that. And again, because he's close, I can actually just pull back on the stick and kill the Jado. But I would still have to wait for my uh, squadron to come back. Now, I would normally uh, never do this in... In Poveda, in a, in a live match. Never attack cruisers because they have an incredibly uh, long time to dodge. They not only hear the sound cue, but the, the visual cue. And most more often times than not, they're not going to be like this bot, hopefully, in your matches. And they're just going to run to that. Although devastating to cruisers, you don't want to be doing to that. Another thing to point out. Poveda is the only carrier at tier 7 to have a small weakness with the fighters. When your fighters deploy from the from the carrier itself, there is a small delay, but it is noticeable. It's around 3 seconds long until you can launch planes again. This is um, a little annoying when you are under attack. It is very annoying when you're under attack, um, since you can't help yourself with uh, your own cap fighters from the planes. There we go. There we go. See? Again, uh, skip bombers, momentum based. You want to keep this momentum high. So not only do your skip bombers go faster, but they have a better chance of hitting the target. You saw you saw what the what the reticle looked like before, and now look what it is now. Full momentum. Very good. Very good. And again, very good rotate on the uh, on the carrier itself. So you can get from point A to point B. Very nicely. Although, I would never, never trust the autopilot in this game. The autopilot is very wonky. More often than not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kill you. So you have to act uh, at least a minute and a half before uh, before you actually want to do your thing. So you get to uh, be thinking ahead of schedule by at least, at least a minute and a half. 30mm deck obviously saves us from 406s. No George in this game. And everyone else is dead because they're bots, so... I'm going to move on to uh, a different uh, gameplay perspective. But, as you saw, momentum-based momentum skip bombs. You can kill the Jado. You can kill the Jado by pulling back the stick. Um, Seven-man fighter pod instantly denies a large area for enemy planes. EM, incredibly useful for skip bombs since low on HP. And EM will most likely last the entire drop time for uh, skip bombs. 
and torpedo bombs, so you you get the most bang for your buck out of all the carriers for EM. And the carrier is pretty dang fast. So I'm gonna move on to a actual uh, uh, live match, and I'm gonna show you guys with commentary how I play it, what's going through my head, and we are gonna find uh, some actual people to fight instead of uh, some bots. Okay, so here we have a tier 7 match. Um, actually, if you take a look at it, it's almost an all tier 7 match. Looking at their good AA ships, we have a Lexington and an Iowa. Mainly a ZF6 to get rid of the fighters, and it could also, if I'm long enough into his AA aura, his uh, AA could actually potentially shoot down my planes, because remember, these skip bombers have quite low HP for the tier, so I have to actually look out for him. Mains, potentially, same... Same thing though, I have to miss the first drop, come back around for the second, and maybe at that time his uh, AA could have shot my planes down theoretically. I'm going to let this play out before I start talking again. As you can see there, the Jado actually did take me quite a long distance, over 230 knots. Now this first play I'm making, I usually go to B uh, and get some cap control. Hopefully for our destroyer there, because I noticed our destroyer was in mid, so potentially going B. Lexington does drop fighters, so I uh, retaliate with my own fighter, hopefully to get his fighters off of my planes, and hopefully I can strike and find the DD. What you're looking for in Pobeda mainly is looking for the DD first, getting DD control, and then moving on to cap control. After that, you can start farming the capital ships. I saw this AA bubble, and there was no way this was a cruiser. Lining up the Pobeda shots, uh, they will usually attack onto the bar, and that's what I was thinking there. The ZF6 did make a huge, uh, huge mistake there by overturning, and I took advantage of that, landing three bombs, almost getting him uh, down to half HP. I noticed Lexington is actually striking RBBs behind me, so I get behind an island, quite big, and on the right side, only two battleships could potentially shoot at me, but then again, 30mm deck. Now, what I notice here is that the Zetan actually makes horrible mistake. Do not do this in a battleship. He pushes up in mid with a Pobeda. Not even that, he pushed up alone. So, the way Pobeda works, usually, is it's an amazing uh, push stopper. Because of that, um, that close range DPM. And when as you're looking, the Zetan is almost 12, 13 kilometers, but the Jado does not care. It brings my planes incredibly close, almost into his AA range. Zetan's AA is 4 or 5, if I remember correctly. We knock out his engine there. That is almost a guaranteed damage con on a battleship. He's going to damage con that. And remember, this thing only has 3 damage controls at the moment, as of September 8th, 2022. And I'm just going to put pressure and pressure and pressure on the Zetan because of that limit damage con, limited damage con, hopefully... My teammates shoot at him, but looking at the, looking at them on the map, it doesn't seem to happen. I don't know. I don't know why we're pushing back here, guys. Don't don't do this. I look at the mini map. Uh, most of the time, when you're playing a carrier, your your eyes are glued onto the mini map. So I go give my Udachi some support. He's actually gonna be requesting support like crazy this match. I don't know why he did it. But while I'm here, I'm gonna strike the Turpus. Hopefully, get a fire on him. And since he's alone, he'll think. Hey, I can just damage con this, it's only one fire, and I'm alone, so who's gonna relight me? Well, I am. Even though we're 16 kilometers away, our Jado is gonna launch us into space, and we're gonna get onto the Turpets in a matter of 30, 20 seconds. And then the Lexington strikes me. I don't blame him here, actually, because I was the closest ship, and everyone else, if you look at the minimap for my team, Yudachi's in mid, but he's in a smoke screen. Uh, there's two guys behind me, and he's way too far to effectively strike the, the guys on, on the right. Now what I'm looking here with the torpedoes is a flood. Turpitz has to turn out for this, because he's already committed, and battleships don't have that good of a rudder. Instantly bringing out the skip bombs. I was hopefully hopefully looking for uh, either a relight on the Turpitz or ZF6, but I saw that this Vladivostok was making the same mistake that the Zetan was earlier. There's the flood on the turpits. He's gonna, he's gonna take for a little bit. So I'm thinking, hey, the damage con probably wore off 
uh, 20 seconds before I hit those torps, so I'm probably going to stalk the turpets, thinking that the ZF6 rotated right. And as we'll see later, my prediction was right. ZF6 did turn right because the Brandenburg did just die to a DOT, the flood. So I'm just going to wait for this turpets. Hopefully, his damage con runs out soon, or it comes back soon, so I can relight him with the fire after the flood. And remember, a, a battleship's damage con is usually around 10 to 15 seconds. The Americans do make this tricky. The dotting, dotting strategy on most carriers tricky because of the 27 damage con, 20 second damage con. And you can actually build into that with Makarov, and you could get a potentially 25 second damage con. So there's a damage con on turpets. I'm thinking now's the time to strike. But at the same time, I'm also thinking, man, I have to get out of here. And so that's where the 35 not rotate and the 30 millimeter deck are going to come to play. Unfortunately, mines does have quarter pen and easily punches through a 30 millimeter deck with the HE. There's the fire on the turpets. Maybe going to stick, maybe not. Right now, I'm thinking of helping the Yudachi. He's been asking for support like crazy, so let's actually give him some. I wanted to reset the, the mains. Here, my main strategy was to reset the mains and hopefully go for the Vladivostok behind him. Unfortunately, that Yudachi will not land torps. So I'm probably the only one that can reset you. Pop an EM charge because I am in two ships AA. Vladivostok's AA, not the greatest, but at the same time, it's a whole battleship's AA uh, helping out of mains. So that squadron is most likely dead. There's the reset, cap goes down all the way to almost zero. And as you can see, punches straight through the 30, uh, 30mm deck, but the damage con is active, so you cannot spark a fire. Whenever you're running away, never cancel the Jado, and always stick to the Jado, because turning hard right with the Jado is faster than killing the Jado and then turning back. It's, it'll still push you like a thir three kilometers inward towards the target even if you're going backwards so what's the strategy here I see on the bottom right of my screen that squadrons are decently healthy they're not they're not incredibly healthy so decently healthy against an Iowa is still kind of weak so what I do I go for a long-range drop hopefully they hit him you have to get quite you have to have quite ex uh, quite some time with destroyers and even some carriers to land these because the, even though there's they're uh, they're long range, they're still pretty slow, and they're pretty hard to hit at range. But when it works, it's amazing for stacking dots. I was waiting for that other um, that other pair of skip bombers to come in, because I'd rather strike with a full uh, six six squadron than strike with a five and then a two. And then we come back, or or the torpedo bombers come back and they're full. Don't really have the best opportunity to strike this Iowa. Another big thing with carriers is just because you can fly over islands, it takes up a lot of your momentum. So if you can go around it like uh, like a like a boat in this game, because it does kill some momentum trying to increase altitude and decrease altitude. Surprisingly, decreasing altitude does not make you go faster, even though that's how physics works. But you know. More gaming, who cares? So do try to avoid the islands. And do try to rotate your fighters so that you get spots off. But the only reason I'm not rotating my fighters is because I'm quite low and I can actually intercept some of Lexi's bombs. So I'm trying to save these fighters. Pop an EM charge there because I really want to get rid of this Iowa. And um, I try to boost my planes here too. Slowing down the aircraft can increase the the time it takes for your uh, cone to... Uh, aim so increasing speed and decreasing speed will increase it increase the time you need but it also decreases the uh, the length so you get more more uh, more time to think about where you're aiming very good I, I really recommend uh, slowing down on these attacks here I slow down hard give my cone time to aim and then when I'm when I'm comfortable I let go of the cone and then drop so that's a lot of Vostok fragged Mains does have a tiny angle on me, so that is kind of a threat. And I wait a little bit for my torpedoes to travel sometime, and then Vlad gets fragged. Pull back on the stick here to get rid of the Jado. And then, as soon as that's gone, my squadron comes back. I strike the mains. Hopefully, hopefully trying to get our Udachi. I don't He doesn't really uh, rotate a lot in this match, but 
There's 14k. These skip bombers incredibly versatile and they hit like a truck when you need to. I thought the Yudachi was gonna kill him with those um, eight torpedoes and then just one, one of those in the mains. But that doesn't happen and the mains actually probably ends up fragging him here. Yep, I go for a very hard strike on this uh, mains. Torpedoes on the cruisers is really hard to get with Pobeda. Unless the cruiser, you know, has no brain function. And here comes the Lexington. He's, he, he sees that I'm low and Pobeda is quite easy to strike because remember you don't get prop mod. And the torpedo protection on this thing is actually none. Even though in the in port it actually says port, uh, torpedo protection, you actually don't get any if you check the stat page. So what I'm thinking here is first I have to find the ZF6 and then I was going to go frag out that Lexi. But here's the huge thing. I saw that my squadron got detected early, so this guy must be close. And sure enough, there they are. I pop a, a patrol fighter charge or flares. You could call it flares too to direct carrier uh, planes or just flat out shoot them down. Carrier fighters are uh, very inconsistent in this game. They can spawn right on the planes or they can spawn two kilometers away from the planes. And there's my clear sky. Threat down and now I'm behind teammates. Hopefully the Lexington doesn't go for me. He can definitely go for it. But with a half squadron on torpedoes, probably not going to go for it. So for the strategy for getting uh, rid of carriers, is knock out their, D, uh, their their DOT or sort of DOT and then mess with their fire extinguisher because the extinguishers on carriers you can't control them at all and they last a minute guaranteed guaranteed every single carrier in the game last has a minute long DCP unless you affect it in some way with the commanders as I'm looking earlier I saw that C was ticking so quite possibly I could frag out the Lexi and the ZF6, so that's what I'm going for. Lexi obviously much more healthy. Remember back in the start of the game, we did uh, strike the ZF6 with three bombs, getting him almost to half. And he was recently spotted uh, on the right, so teammates for sure shot, uh, saw him, quite possibly took shots at him, and he could be lower. So with this fighter squadron here, I'm mainly using it to spot and not intercept. Yes, the, the Lexi does get close for interception. But I'm more so looking to just spot this guy and get this game over with. Hopefully I live. Hopefully I get out of this battle alive. And here comes Lexi. Lexi actually has one of the strongest AAs in the game. It's right next to Parcival for the strongest tier 7 AA. Depending on if you want range or DPM. DPM going to Parcival and range going to Lexi. So there's that. And I'm instantly going to swap over to the skip bombs. I'm going to kill the Jado here just a little bit because I do realize... As soon as I'm spotted, I'm taking AA damage, pull back on the Jado, and I instantly slow down. There's the F6 for sure. People shot him. There. And he actually does make a clever move here. Does turn out. And we only land him once with one. So I go down, unfortunately, but he did shoot in front of a Bismarck. And Bismarck, even though most Bismarck players are pretty dumb, this guy actually has a brain. And he does end up finishing him. Now, what could I have done better in that game? Possibly fragged out the Zeekton a little bit faster and gone for restrikes on the ZF6. Although the Turpets play was also pretty good. There's the frag. But that's just an average game, guys. That's that's what you're looking for in Pobeda. Managing your fighter squadrons, helping out your destroyers, getting rid of uh, the destroyers or deterring them, and then defending from capital ships with that Jado charge. I'll see you guys in port after this. So after a okay per performance by me, almost 190k, what can we take away from this? Well, 7-man fighter charge very uh, helps greatly deter the carrier from uh, the destroyer, as you saw. Uh, even though the Yudashi was in smoke, the D, uh, the cruise, uh, the carrier, <laughs> the Lexington still wanted to go after him, so I popped the 7-man fighter charge. That uh, got him off of him. And it actually, he actually uh, relaunched onto me. Also, with positioning, if you can, don't always risk it. But if you can get uh, up close to an island, preferably a big one like the last match, and angle the 30mm deck to enemy shots, it's uh, it's very effective in combination with your Jado. Launching your planes every uh, minute, getting a strike every maybe 30 seconds, as you saw with the Z10, rotating, rotating. And uh, with the Sharnhorst, you... You really want to stack dots with uh, most carriers, 
if you're not in a Parsifal, or God help you if you have uh, if you had Zeppelin. But the main strategy really is uh, trying to dot enemy uh, capital ships and hunting destroyers, cruisers with Pobeda. You're gonna to, you're gonna struggle a little bit more again because you can only rely solely on the skip bombers because uh, torpedo bombs. As you saw with uh, with mains, we couldn't really hit him with uh, torpedoes, but when we when we did hit him with the uh, skip bombers, we did get some good damage. Another thing to take away there, uh, one minute damage count on uh, CVs if they're not built with Makarov. As you saw, skip bombs almost guaranteed a fire, even with, even with the the four bombs that we sent that guaranteed the fire, got rid of the damage count, and the Lexington was dead. And then keeping a general area or a general consensus of where most of their force is. As, as the match progressed, I saw that they were pushing up, so I rotated out, and as soon as I saw that they were stagnating and starting to fall back a little bit, I turned around to keep my Jado alive. So guys, that's my basic guide on to how to effectively play the Pobeda. I will have a more advanced guide, a more in-depth guide, but for now, this was uh, my first take onto a how-to CV. Uh, so hopefully you guys stick around and check out my advanced guide that I'll have coming out on Tuesday, actually, because on Monday I have something more important to do. <laughs> Not saying that dropping these videos and playing well is more important than, you know, a doctor visit, but, you know, it kind of is. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you guys want to, leave a like, maybe even subscribe. Just kidding. I'm not that popular yet. Oh. Вражеский эсминец потоплен. Наша команда близка к победе.